Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Niche Nonsense. My favorite art makes me feel like a Victorian peasant that was just handed a Dorito by a time traveler. The time machine disappears and I'm wondering, what the fuck just happened? Did anyone else see this? What is this feeling? What the hell am I looking at? I take a bite and my brain short circuits. I don't even have the knowledge to comprehend every little element that came together to make this happen, so the only logical explanation is magic. I witness magic. And you want to run and tell everyone what happened, but you don't know how to explain it. Words feel minuscule next to the feeling. Making others understand feels like attempting alchemy with an easy bake oven. How the fuck did they do that? It's how I felt after the finale of Breaking Bad and the first time I heard 20 to a million. I still remember the exact block I was walking down. And it's how you'll feel when you hear Dijon. We come alive in the evening. We it. Watch the live music videos around his debut album Absolutely and you'll understand. There you go again and head low, putting on a show again. Dijon is an artist that sings from the soul. It's raw, straight from the source magic. It's where you see that the force behind this is bigger than wax can capture. His music's like living inside someone else's nostalgia. You somehow already experience what you're just now seeing for the first time. You don't recognize the scene, but you know the feeling. It's a thrift store VHS with a stranger's home video on it. Dijon said he wants there to be a displacement of time and space in his music. And there is. It's ephemeral. Lyrics unfurl like a Terrence Malick sequence, full of specific, disparate forces that make you feel a part of a larger fabric of humanity. The songs are both smooth and sharp like a honey-covered rose thorn. And his voice is tapped straight into that magic too. It's textured, raspy in the right moments, masterfully imperfect. He puts his full soul into every last syllable his voice drenched in pure emotion. When it cracks in pain during Rodeo Clown, you're on the verge of tears with him. At times so tender, you could cut through it easier than floss with a butcher's knife. Tell me what are you so afraid of? Cause you're missing out on Other times it's coarse and hazy, a post-cigarettes and karaoke kind of grovel in it. As songs like Big Mike's and Many Times build towards their peak, his voice is blasted, neck veins popping out, every last ounce of feeling overflowing. It hits you straight in the spine. It's a beautiful three in the morning kickback type of chaos. A world blurring around him with each snorri cam shot. You hear bottles knocking over, and it's messy, but it's soul. And he bounces between chaos and beauty with precision. His vocals complemented perfectly by his lyrical writing style. At times stream of consciousness, at times impressionistic. They give you glimpses of scenes and let you fill in the full picture. Strawberry, raspberry. He listened many times before pleading. For all the voice shattering, pleading, and screaming, there's quiet love coursing through it all too. Dance song is so romantic, it should be illegal to play through a single person speaker. Other songs feel like driving past your old high school five years after graduating, when the details fade and only dust covered feeling remains. Take the nostalgic old joy of Nico's Red Shirt. If you go for a late night joyride down a quiet headlight lit road to the stranger, you'll feel melancholy swallow you whole. So stranger, you is the dress cries out. Go out and dance like we used to dance. It's bargaining with a worn out memory. The writing is versatile and piercing. And Dijon's in that beautiful era of an early artist where the setlist is flawless. Enough hits that you're not just waiting for the big one. He's in perfect sync with his main collaborator, Mike Gordon, known for his solo act, McGee. And after working to improve a disconnect he sensed between himself and the audience in earlier shows, Dijon's found a way to conceptually recreate intimacy. The intimacy that initially drew us all in. It's a few friends sitting around an eight-foot folding table, letting the music take care of the rest on stage but without the usual artifice. It transports us back to the apartment that made the music flow in the first place. At every step of the process, the presentation stays true to the soul of the work. Focused and intentional, 
with what needs to be in place to recreate and capture that initial magic. You see it in the studio recordings themselves. Three songs into Absolutely, they decided to switch to one mic left constantly running in the middle of the room, making the space itself another instrument. The TV static and beer bottles and laughter adding a new layer to the sound and placing the audience in the studio next to them, cultivating a space of intimacy that lets true soul and emotion come through. It's an artist in control of their vision. Dijon feels like a distinct moment in music evolution, a cultural touchstone one that the culture needs a second to digest. I don't think there's a chance this video does well, but I'll scream from the rooftop in the meantime. Maybe the algorithm will send it your way in a few years, and by then it'll be a time capsule of what his music felt like before he was headlining festivals. This will feel like I'm talking about Frank Ocean, like I'm at a party raving about Channel Orange and everyone's like, yeah, dude, we all know. But that's not where Dijon is right now. If it was up to me, I'd take over every broadcast like a supervillain monologue just to play many times to the masses. But for now, I trust what looks like a ripple is bound to build in waves like a tsunami headed to shore. It's the real thing. What's real is inevitable. It's worth our attention. In Dijon's music, there's now evidence that it's possible to share this level of feeling. And whether you're a painter, a writer, a sculptor, anyone who aims to create, its existence is inspiring. There's this physical reminder of what happens when you source from the soul and let expression flow from deep down. When you make art that's truly present, suddenly the magic is tangible. A new generation of musicians will see his work as a revelation. And I can't wait to see what art this art creates. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please subscribe for more video essays on the absurdity of it all and the art that makes it worthwhile. And let me know what other niche nonsense we should dive into next.